Hey guys, I'm back uh, here in the lab at uh, Columbus East. So today we've got a lab. My classes will be coming down to the lab and um, performing this lab that I'm about to show you. Since I can't bring the lab to you and or, and I can't expect you to have these materials at your house uh, to do, I'm going to walk through the lab um, for us. Uh, that way you can just do your results based on what I get. So before we get going, I'm going to show you around uh, the lab. I'm actually standing back here at one of our biology tables. So if you look, th this is a biology table. It's all set up for the lab today. Um, this, I'm actually walking toward the front of the lab right now. This is another bio table. This right here, this is a chemistry table. Um, you can see like our gas outlets and Bunsen burners and stuff like that um, out. So whenever you're a, a sophomore or whenever you take chemistry, you'll get to be up here at one of these tables up toward the front. This right here, this is our uh, where our lab assistant sits. And she's who sets up all these labs for us. So whenever we come in or wherever you get the chance, uh, on your way in, tell her thank you, because she's the reason that we get to do all these things. Um, and that way, you know, I can spend my time uh, preparing other lessons and getting things ready and graded and stuff like that. So they're a huge help. So anytime you get a chance to tell them thanks, uh, do that. So I'll go ahead and I'll get started on the lab. You guys should have, um, if you're working your way through the plan today, the resource before this video, sorry about drop my paper. Uh, the resource before this video was your lab for today. So look something like this. If you were able to print that out, that's great. Um, if you weren't, that's fine as well. Um, I get that some, not everybody has printers at home. So what you'll have to do is you're gonna have to try and make your own charts. So if you don't have a printer that you can print things out on, Make some of these charts, write down these questions so that you guys can answer them on a separate sheet of paper, and then you could submit a picture of that to me. If you have any questions, let me know, anything like that. But other than that, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get started, and that way we can get through this as fast as possible. I know I say that all the time, and then it ends up being a decently long video, and I'm sorry, um, but I'm trying to get through this stuff as fast as I can. So... We'll see how long this takes today. Hopefully not too long, but um, just giving you a heads up. I'm going through an entire lab, so it might take, you know, 20 minutes or so. But if we get done earlier, that's great. So I'm looking at part A right here, and I'm standing. I've already prepared some of the materials um, just so that um, it didn't take as much time. If you look at step number one on part A, it says... Fill a small graduated cylinder with 10 milliliters of water. I've already done that. This is a graduated cylinder. So whenever you come in the lab, if I say um, a small graduated cylinder, this is what it looks like. We'll see a larger one later in the lab, but this is a small one. Whenever we read uh, how much water is in a graduated cylinder, we go from the bottom of the meniscus. You'll see that in your lab packet. And... Some of you might know what that is, some of you might not. So I'm gonna go ahead and explain it. When you have water in a graduated cylinder, it's kind of hard to see on the camera, I think. Yeah, it kind of looks flat. I can't get the right angle. But if you were holding this flat up to your eye level, you would notice that the water like droops in. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, just Google meniscus in a graduated cylinder and it will pull up a picture and I, I'm sure that would be a lot clearer than how I just explained it. But we read from the bottom of it, so the lowest point of where the water is, and that's because the water wants to stick to the outside, to the edges of the plastic. So that's what creates that. So I've already done that. And what we do is we count the number of drops it takes to raise the water level to 11 milliliters, and then we'll record that number in the chart. So I've already, I've got some water here in a small beaker. This is called a beaker and we'll get the water out of it by using an eyedropper. So I'm gonna fill up the, the dropper here and I'll do my best to angle this camera so you guys can see me uh, dropping the water into the graduated cylinder. 
So what I'm going to do, I want to get down here about eye level with it and see how many drops it takes me to raise this one milliliter. And I'll count them out loud so that you guys can see that. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, five drops. It took me five drops to raise that one milliliter of water. So right there in that first section of your chart, you're gonna write a five. Obviously, once again, I know this isn't the best because it's a forward facing camera, so it's all backwards, but I've wrote a five right there when it said, where it said number of drops to 11 milliliters. Okay, next thing we're gonna raise it another milliliter. So I'm gonna try again. And let's see how many it takes this time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six drops that time. The reason we do it multiple times is to try and get accurate results. Look, I'm not perfect whenever I'm dropping water in like this. Not every single drop's the exact same size. So we're trying to figure out about how much it takes to raise that um, level one milliliter. So I'd write a six in the chart where it says number of drops to 12 milliliters. And I did that right there. Once again, backwards because it's forward facing. And then I do it a third time. So let's do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay seven drops that time. So look, I had five, six, and seven. So I wrote a seven in there where it says number of drops to 13 milliliters. So now what you'll do, I'm not going to average it for you so that you guys can do some stuff um, on your own, but you would uh, find the average. Remember to find average, we just add up the three numbers in this case. So five plus six plus seven and then we divide by three because that's how many different numbers there are. So you guys will find that. And then um, you can answer the following two questions. So if you need a second to do that, uh, you can pause this and answer those questions. And then whenever um, you're done with those, just go on and hit play. And I'm going to head over to the next part. Okay, so I'm walking over there right now. Once again, if you need a second to answer those questions, just pause me. But I'm going to keep on going. So let's get to uh, letter B here. So the first thing, it says add 20 milliliters of water to a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder and record this amount in the chart. So what I've got here is I've got a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder and I've already filled it up to 20 milliliters of water and I read it uh, from the bottom of the meniscus. Now, what you would do right here is in this section of the lab where it says volume of water before adding marbles, you would write 20 milliliters. Okay, so do that now. Then what we're going to do is add three marbles to the cylinder and measure the volume. Record this amount in the chart. So I've got three marbles right here. And I'm just going to drop those down in here. And now I'm going to read and see how much that water level is raised. So I get down here about eye level with it. And it is now at 26 milliliters. So where it would say, where it says volume of water after adding marbles, you write 26 milliliters. Okay. And then you find the difference. You guys can do that. So you would take 26 minus 20. And whatever your difference is, that's the volume of your marbles. Okay? So that is what you do for that section. So once again, if you need a second to fill that in, go ahead and take that. You can pause me. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next section of the lab. You get on the right page here. Sorry, I can't, um, <laughs> I'm lost on where I'm at. There we go, okay. 
and this whole packet's not the not the lab, so don't worry. Um, <laughs> I have all of this because it's the entire unit, so don't worry. I don't have to go through this entire packet um, on this video. So the next part, part C, if you're ready to go, here we go. So we're going to use a scale like this. I'm going to teach you guys how to use it. Looks like that. I'm going to try and place it. Let's see how this works. If I place you back behind it, you can kind of see that way, and I'll kind of get down here. I'll go down to the knee so you can see me. So number one, it says check to see that the pointer is pointing to zero. These over here, these are the pointers, okay? So I'm putting them all at zero. I'm going to turn this around. We'll see how easy it is for me to do backwards, but that way you guys can see it. So if you look here, each one of these is pointing to zero. And over here, when this comes to rest, that line right there at, lines up with the zero. So we can tell it's all pointing to zero. Uh, skip down to, it says number two. If it is not, check to see that all the riders, these are the riders, um, are all the way to the left at the zero mark. So we've done that, and it's all pointing to zero, so we're all good to go um, for number three. So then adjust the balance by turning uh, the adjust screw slowly until it points to zero. We don't have to mess with the um, adjust screw because ours is uh, pointing to zero. So don't worry about that. And then place your metric ruler on the pan and read and record the ruler's mass. So we are going to put this on here. And we're going to find the mass of this... Uh, Ruler. So what you have to do is you kind of have to move these weights around and try to get that line to line up. So first thing, let's try let's try the smallest weight here. I'll bump it over. Okay, and what I want to do is I'm going to see how far over I can move it to make it tilt. So that smallest one didn't do anything. So I'm going to move it on back over. Let's try this bigger one. Okay, yeah, that didn't move it either. I keep on bumping this thing over until it makes that go down below. Now see how that line is dropped below the zero? That means I need to go back a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna bump this back. That's still too heavy because it's below. So I need to go back another one. Okay, so now it's too light. So that means that I have to move this light one again. Okay, I'm going to move it. This is going to be super hard for me to read uh, with it facing the other way, but we'll get that figured out. Okay, so I just move that over until I can get those lines to line up. It's down below it, so i got to move it back a little bit. We're very, very close. So, see, it's still above it, so I need to bump it over just a little bit more. Let it come to rest. There it is. So see, now I'm gonna read this one. So I've got it, I gotta come to this side to see it. Okay, that's at 10, okay? And we're measuring in grams. So that's at 10. And this one right here is at eight. So 10 plus eight is 18 grams. That's how much this ruler weighs. So you'll write that in your chart. Okay, so then let's take that off. We're gonna reset everything back to zero. And now we're going to find the mass of an empty graduated cylinder. Okay, so now let's just skip to this one right here and let's see what, how much I have to move it over to make it dip below. Okay, so I need to go back to the, I think that's the 20 mark. And then I have to bump this over here. And let's see if we can get that to line up. Pretty good, okay? So now I've got this at the 20 mark, and I've got this at the four and a half. So 20 plus four and a half is 24 and a half. So you would write that down, 24.5 uh, for massive empty 50 milliliter graduated cylinder. So write that down. Okay, now we need to find the mass of three marbles, okay? 
So here, let me grab my pencil real quick. Okay, so if I know that the graduated cylinder mass is 24.5, that's really gonna come into play here in a second. Sorry for staying up out of frame, because how in the world am I gonna get these marbles to stay on here? That didn't work, right? So look, if I know that this weighs 24 and a half grams, I can put this on here. And then I'm gonna put these marbles down in the graduated cylinder and let's find um, the weight of that. Okay, so let's uh, mess with this. Keep on bumping this over a little bit. Oh, that's too heavy. So I'll go back. Move that a little bit. Too heavy. Go back. That's lined up pretty well. So now we are at 35 and a half. Okay, so I'm going to make a little note of that off to the side. And I know that the graduated cylinder and the marbles weigh 35 and a half grams. I made a little note up here. And I know that just the graduated cylinder weighs 24 and a half grams. So if I take 35.5 minus 24.5, we come up with 11.5. So the mass of your three marbles is 11.5. Hopefully you guys followed how I got that because we found the mass of the, the empty graduated cylinder, added the marbles, found the mass of that, and then just subtracted the mass of the empty uh, graduated cylinder. That way we could find the mass of just the three marbles. Okay. And this last section, hopefully if you guys have a ruler at home, you guys can measure um, this box right down here. If you don't have a ruler at home, just message me on It's Learning and uh, we'll figure something out um, as far as that goes as well. But that's what you're gonna do for the last section because I think a, a ruler is pretty common. You can also, um, you, can, <laughs> you can actually look them up online on a screen and put your paper up next to that. So, uh, just try and figure out a way to, to measure that last section uh, so you can figure that out. But that's all I've got for you for today's lab. If you guys have any questions, just let me know, um, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.